some of the kids, um, you know, like when I when I uh, sponsor a child, I have to see their homes where they live and everything. And usually, they, when I show up with a the camera, they're always well dressed and everything. But sometimes I, I show up unannounced, and this is what I find, right? Like I can see the, the real story of the of the family. For example, this this child or these children, they live in a um, fertilizer factory over here, and there's wood chips all over the place to they mix with the fertilizer, and you know they don't have shoes, so obviously it's not good for their feet, right? So that's the the types of conditions that they live. Uh, this is Fabiola. Right now she's uh, five years of age, and same thing, right? The very poor families, uh, no shoes. All the children are malnourished, all of them. And uh, and the other problem that we have around here is violence. Uh, her father uh, was um, a baker, and he was the only um, breadwinner in the family. And he worked in Guatemala City, one of the bakeries over there. But the problem was that he finished work around uh, eight at night, and then he had to travel to Chimaltenango and then walk from the, you know, from the mm -hmm. Burger King into all the streets all the way home, which was over there. And uh, one night, uh, these uh, thieves they they stopped him and they took his money. He had the money for his monthly salary, right? Mm -hmm. Just about seven hundred pesos. So they robbed him, and he was on his way. But two weeks later, they did the same thing again. But this time, he didn't have any money. So they got so upset, they, they broke his head with a rock, and he was killed. So now the, the mother, this is the family, that's their home. But the mother, the only thing that she can do to make a living with uh, five children is making tortillas. Mm -hmm. And you know, tor you know, with one quetzal you buy five tortillas. So you can make the, mm -hmm. it's extremely hard for these people to, to survive like that. And there is no choice because the, uh, the places where they have to live are a little really far away and not safe, so they have, you know, they have to risk it anyway. So it's very complicated for them. All right, so that's the uh, kind of like a picture of how our students or where our students come from. And uh, but the, we think that there is hope, right? We, we, we think that these kids are able to get out of poverty as long as we give them an opportunity. Because, you know, I know them, like I know that they're smart. Many people think uh, that they won't be able to do anything, but we know that they're smart. And uh, even their own families, sometimes when you talk to them, they go, oh, I'm so dumb, I can never get anything because they have been uh, made to believe that they cannot do anything right. So, so we, we are very sure that these kids can, can make it out of poverty and out of all this trouble as long as they get an education. And the reason that I know that is because uh, my family went through that process already once. So, for example, this is a picture of a Mayan couple from the 1930s. Uh, which is not my grandparents, but uh, it could have easily been them because that's the condition that they had, right? They had no home, they had no job, they only worked in the fields, uh, they didn't speak Spanish, they never attended one day of school in their whole lives. But uh, still they managed to, uh, to survive by selling uh, fruits and vegetables in the market and, and planting corn and black beans. So this is my grandparents. Uh, it's a picture from the 1970s or so. And uh, they quickly realized that they had to do something different if they wanted to get their family out of trouble, right? So their one idea that they had was that out of the 11 children that they had, they were going to try to put at least three to the school, which were the last three kids. So everybody in the whole family got together, put their savings together, worked and everything, and they managed to get three kids into school. And uh, one of them was my father, his name was Joselin. Uh, so um, he made it through um, elementary school, he made it through high school, mm -hmm. and he made it through university, which was something unheard of. Even, even to this day, it's unheard of for a Maya person. So because he made it through university, well, first of all, the conditions of the family changed. This is a picture that was taken uh, after this moment. This is my father right here. One, this, these are the three uh, brothers that made it through, uh, through school. And all of them uh, were... Um, doing okay, right? They got good jobs. And for example, my sister, my brother, and I never had to suffer through any of the things that I showed you there. We had medicine, we had school, we had pretty much you know, everything that, that we needed, right? So because of that, I, we totally believe that education is the way to, to change a life here in Guatemala. So uh, knowing that, then when I came back to Guatemala, we started working on this, uh, on this school, right? And the idea is to give as many children as possible the opportunity that my father had so many years ago. So this is where, where the school comes in. You know, you've seen the school. Um, 
we try to get our children in as early as possible. These kids are two years old in this picture. Because at that age, you can uh, teach them language, you can teach them math, you can teach them to skip on one foot. You know, anything the child will learn at that age. And it's a lot easier than when they are already older and they have some, you know, like, it's a lot easier to teach, for example, math to a three-year-old than a 10-year-old that has never been in school, for example. So the, the sooner we get them in, the better. Um, we also try to use the latest that we have. We have uh, a few computers over there, so they learn some stuff. And uh, the, the good thing about the computers is that the motivation. They, it's like children everywhere, they love computers. So if you want to teach them something hard, that's a good way to start. But the computers, we also try to do different things to, uh, to make it interesting for them. This is a history lesson for, for our children, and it's made out of a play that the older children